one, two, and three. We want to welcome everybody today to Mom and Dad Talks, where our favorite two people are Mom and Dad, and we're coming a little early. How y'all doing today? Uh, we're doing just great, just right here in Michigan. It's 17 degrees, and uh, the sun is shining, but it doesn't mean anything. Okay, 17 degrees. For some people, that's really cold, but the sun is shining, so we're going to take that as it may. Well, I'm, we're glad that you guys are alive and well and doing well, and the sun is shining. 17 degrees is a little too cold for me. Even though I was raised there, it's still too cold. Mm -hmm. um, today's subject is going to be very, very interesting. I, I, it's very sad to me. Um, John, and I'll, I'll probably mess his name up, uh, Kozwazinki, killed in Tallahassee road rage incident. Now, I was reading this article here um, uh, by uh, Tristan Wood, and I'm just reading the article here just so you can understand some of the dynamics here, folks. John, I'll just say John because I can't say his uh, last name too well. The legislative affairs director of the state board of administration was killed in a shootout triggered by a road rage incident in North Tallahassee. Okay. The Leon County Sheriff took one person into custody after the January 6th incident. However, that person has since been released and no charges have been filed according to uh, the news release. The office issued an initial statement reporting a fatal shooting that occurred last Thursday shortly after 5 p.m. near the intersection of Bannerman Road and Thomasville Road. Following an altercation between two drivers, Thursday's release confirmed Kazazinki was killed in the incident. The investigation into what occurred is still ongoing. There are conflicting reports about what happened, though it appears events escalated to fatal violence following a traffic accident. Sources familiar with the details of the investigation told Florida politics that Kazinki caused the auto accident that began the chain of events and that he began the shootout that led to his own death. The sources said that the incident began after Kazinki's BMW drifted out of the, its lane while heading north on Thomasville Road. That's when the BMW hit a white Prius. Both cars pulled into a parking lot. The driver of the Prius confronted Kazinki about hitting him. The sources said the Prius driver then returned to his car to wait for law enforcement arrival after confronting Kazinki. That's when, according to Florida politics sources, Kazinki rammed his BMW into the Prius on the driver's door and began pushing the car sideways in the parking lot. Kazinki then uh, shot a gun at the uh, white Prius, according to the sources. The Prius driver drew a gun and fired back into the windshield of Kazinki's BMW. Kazinki was hit and killed, according to sources. The driver of the Prius then exited their vehicle on the passenger side and took cover, not knowing if Kazinki was about to fire back. Mm -hmm. However, Kazinki's wife, Rebecca, said in a Twitter thread that her husband was a victim while confirming he lost his life. She claimed that he was trapped and assassinated and was trying to escape the person shooting at him. Those comments were made on a thread posted by the Florida Politics publisher, Peter Scorch, probably messed up his name, announcing Kazinki's death. He was on his way home early to pick up for a farewell dinner for our daughter. She wrote, he called to say he was on his way to beat traffic. He was excited for dinner and to see us. He told us that he loved us and then never came home. She added that his family deserves time to heal in privacy. Our whole lives are shattered. The children and I and his friends and family are so many who adore his wonderful, kind, loving man would do anything for anyone. We are all devastated. The incident took place less than two miles away from Kwasinski's home. He leaves oh. behind his wife and two children. Mm -hmm. Um, you know the, the sad thing about this is is that um, Kwasinski was arrested for a separate road rage incident at the same intersection in 2014. Um, I'm not putting a judge. I'm I'm not trying to put judge jury anything like this just giving out information the real thing here is controlling your anger um you guys taught me something and i'm gonna let you guys talk in just a minute um because i i used to have a hot temper um back in the day and my mom and dad would tell me you need to control that and i'm glad you guys did because i think i know i'm alive today because you told me to be slow to anger and that's what the bible teaches a lot of us want to jump off and get off on somebody, slow it down, find a way to calm down. You know, everybody could have came home. Accidents happen. I've been in accidents. So, you know, but, but the idea is for everybody to come home. And someone didn't come home, regardless of the incident. Someone didn't come home because you had angry people. So what are your thoughts, mom and dad, on this? My thoughts are 
uh, there's a lot of people out there with anger management problems. And, uh, and that causes, like this man, he was in a car accident and cars can always be replaced. But a human life cannot. This family lost a husband, uh, the wife, a uh, father, uh, very a man that would help anybody at any time. But because of his situation, he was shot and killed. Mm. And it was totally unnecessary. Totally unnecessary. They pulled off into a parking lot, waited for the police to come. And just, how do you want to say it? Just, just control your anger. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is that, yeah, when you raise your voice and you, your arms are all flapping around, that is a sign of you have a problem with your anger. Mm -hmm. And that's not good. Mm. It's not good. Uh, that, that's my... Uh, my, we are, as Christians, we are to be peaceable people. Mm -hmm. Well said, Dad. Mom, what are your thoughts on it? My thoughts I have that there's a saying that says it takes two to make and two to break. Mm. And sometimes we have to stoop a little bit lower than the person who really looks like they're trying to put the blame. Mm -hmm. And there's a saying, take the low road mm -hmm. instead of the high, to try and, trying to overpower someone who really is in the wrong. Mm -hmm. But it, sometimes it just pays to just back off and say, okay, how can we resolve this situation without us, either one of us, losing our temper over? Mm -hmm. And that's the way I would, you know, even if I have to put my hands up to a person that's in road raging and what have you. Uh, that's my take on it. That I'm, I try to be a peacemaker. I don't like confusion or or or, or disgruntled a person being disgruntled or angry or whatever. I try to just take do whatever it takes to, to calm both of us. Yeah, and, uh, and I am an advocate that there are just too many people that have access to guns, especially pistols. Mm -hmm. uh, the long guns, yeah, you can use those for hunting or whatever, but but pistols are just, they're made for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to kill at mm -hmm. close range. You know, and that's I'm very unfortunate in the fact that, uh, like with the, uh, the police officer that reached for her stun gun mm -hmm. and picked up her pistol by mistake, it was just too accessible for her. She made a mistake. Well, now she is paying the price mm -hmm. for that mistake. And I'm sure she regrets it mm -hmm. because uh, in, in, in the video, she was boohooing all about it, that she shot and killed mm -hmm. a human. She shot and killed a human being. And, 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 you know, I think what happens a lot of times is people don't view people as real people. They view them as objects. Mm -hmm. and, and the moment you start viewing people as objects or name calling, that's why it's so dangerous to name call people. Mm -hmm. You liberals, you, 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 you conservatives. It makes it easier for people to kill one another. They become objects. Mm -hmm. They're real people with real families. Mm -hmm. Their husbands, mm -hmm. their fathers, their daughters, you know, uh, sons. And at the end of the day, you know, they're a life. And I think that, that too many people don't view life as precious anymore. I'm so angry, selfishness. Mm -hmm. I'm going to inflict harm because I'm, I'm feeling bad. So I want other people to have a bad day. And, mm -hmm. and we talk about this from time to time because it's unfortunate that we're seeing more and more of these incidences. Um, and, and like I said, when, when I was growing up, I, I couldn't even play and point a gun at somebody. <laughs> you know, the, the sacredness of life with, that you guys taught me, I'm glad you did um, mm -hmm. because life is, 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 is sacred. My yeah. mother, when we were growing up as children, my mother would never allow us to have play guns even in the house because she says guns are made to kill. Mm -hmm. And unless mm -hmm. you're going to be, be uh, killing an animal that's going to attack you, that's what I would use a gun for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other than that, all lives are precious in the sight of God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I was brought up in a different community, but uh, growing up in the country, uh, it was a rite of passage to, to have a gun. But you were taught how to use it. 
you were taught how to shoot shoot it and you were taught to respect that gun mm -hmm. and, and and the gun was kept in a very special place mm -hmm. but 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 when you're driving along and you have a gun uh, on your hip or behind your seat or whatever that is too accessible mm -hmm. uh you know i'm an advocate if you're going to carry a gun put it in the trunk lock mm -hmm. it up so you have to get up out of your car go to the back unlock the trunk to get that gun so you have a time to to think about it mm -hmm. to think about it it's not read readily accessible mm -hmm. and that's what gets me about uh, i don't see it anymore uh i went to gas up here at a gas station and and there are about four or five guys walking around with guns on their hips mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is a dangerous situation. Was it frightening to you? Well, yes. Yeah. Yes. It was, it's yeah. what, they felt they had the power to take a life. It's, it's an intimidation factor a lot of times. Oh, you know, if you come on me, I got something for you. Mm -hmm. um, versus. If, if you know break what? in the house, I'm going to shoot you and kill you. It, you know, at the end of the day, you can have my car. You can have whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's what you're going to do. The officers should of the law should take care of that. And, you know, in the end, it's, it's, it's just tragic. Um, there are times we understand that's why we have the Second Amendment. And uh, But, you know, folk, um, today, we, we're not talking necessarily about gun control, per se. We're talking about anger and how mm -hmm. when you're accessible to, to weapons, and, you, and we see this continue over and over again, mm -hmm. people have easy accessibility to weapons to kill people because they're having a bad day. Mm -hmm. You, you, we got to have some self control at some point. We got to have so you. You got to love people, even people you don't don't even understand. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we we're, we're getting into society where people just I want to inflict harm, and it's becoming and, and, and basically, people that have very low self esteem are mm -hmm. the ones carrying the guns. Mm -hmm. Very low self esteem. Um, it's it's very unfortunate because I remember when I was driving for an armored car service. I had to carry a gun. Mm -hmm. Well, when I'm going to Kroger to get my uh, new lunch, mm -hmm. to buy my lunch, I <laughs> I noticed the looks that I got as I walked in with a gun. Now, can you imagine a black man carrying a gun walking into Kroger? But, ooh, <laughs> instant, instant not, respect. Not carrying that, yeah, gun, yeah, I got an instant respect. You know, people back up, whoa, I'm gonna respect you. You mm -hmm. can do whatever you want to do. Versus follow you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I said, wow, that is truly amazing. And quite frankly, I'd, I'd be the last one to, to, to pull the gun out, even if they were taking money out of, the, out of the truck. It's not worth me taking a life if guy wants to. Because I know the police will catch you up with him anyhow. Mm -hmm. So why would I risk my life and take another life just for a, a pile of money? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they'll, they'll get you. Mm -hmm. They'll get you. You can't get away with it. You know, and, and like I said, I think this is a great conversation. And, and and like I said, for those out there, please get some help, get some therapy for if you have these problems, if you know that you have, you, you go off with zero to 100 real quick, because it, it is more violent out there and people are have more accessibility to weapons more than before. They don't have self-control, a lot of people nowadays. And it, it's a real, it's becoming a, an interesting problem for a lot of people. Uh, for our society right now like what do we do you know you got to protect yourself we understand that but we also have to say you know at the same time too you got to protect others so that you don't harm others with your protection that you have mm -hmm. and it's a very simple solution mm -hmm. stop making the ammunition and start making uh bullets with rubber tips on them <laughs> oh, don't kill anybody you'll hurt them you know, but yeah but they'll They'll, they'll they'll live another day, but it's not making these bullets that are designed to to uh, separate and to maim and to kill. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you can carry a gun if you want, but your 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 ammunition will be a rubber bullet. Yeah, yeah. Well, great point there, Dad. Great point. The well, locator here is talking about anger management again. Yes. Well, there there are people out there that. They, they have trouble with anger management and they'll always be around. Mm -hmm. You know, they, how do you say it? They, the guns are in the wrong hand. Yeah, they, they it's a problem. It's a problem yeah. that a lot of officials, and you have to think about because you got to look at people's personal rights and then you got to look at 
you know, the fact that the rights of people in, in both scenarios, right? The right to protect yourself and the right to inflict harm on people. Mm-hmm. And, um, no. you know, I think this is a great discussion. But like I said, one of the things, like I, like I said, today's topic was about anger management and, 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 and controlling yourself and not, um, you know, you got to be even careful with the car you have. Some people use cars as a weapon. Mm-hmm. Right. Traffic and when I've seen people with road rage trying to run people off the road and stuff, crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but today, folks, be kind. <laughs> be nice to somebody. Um, mm-hmm. If something bad happens, why don't we say I'm sorry? And hey, you know what? We just get into our cars. Let's all go home. You know, mm-hmm. there's, there's there's no oh, need to, to intimidate and do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, all- and treat other and treat other people as you would want to be treated. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I used to work in I used to work in customer service, folk, and I get yelled at every day, mm-hmm. every day, and it's not your fault. You know what I'm saying? And 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 you get paid. Some days were harder than others, and a lot of times I wanted to hang up the phone, but I couldn't because I was customer service. I'm not saying it's very tough, but folk, I went home and every day still had a job. Um, let's all go home. So at the end of the day, folk, we're gonna leave it with that. Let's just be kind, be nice to people. If you find yourself that you have those quick tempers and stuff, please get some help. They got therapists, they got all kinds of things that can help you with that. Um, and if you see a pattern of it, uh, please do something about it for your family and for, for everybody's sake. Because we all want to go home at the end of the day. So we're going to end right there. Until next time, we'll see you again on Mom and Dad Talks. Great one today. I hope someone grew a little bit and became better today. Yeah. See you until next time.